Hello and welcome to Embracing Modern Management. I'm Kevin Kaminsky. I'm a Microsoft MVP for Windows and Devices for IT. My Twitter handle is kkaminsk. So let's get started. Before we get too far, you might be wondering why modern management is such a big deal these days. And well, I like to blame these guys because they created quite a ruckus last year. Not sure if you've saw seen this, but IBM made the news in October 2016 where they said three uh, PCs are three times more expensive to manage than Macs. And that was adding up to over $500 per Mac per user in a four-year time span versus PCs. This got a lot of attention and also created a lot of confusion. So what was IBM talking about? Where were they getting their figures from? And the reality was is they weren't making an apples to apples comparison. They were doing things very different with the Macs opposed to the PCs. And Microsoft had to have a clear strategy to offer something as um, an alternate path with Windows devices to provide this sort of management vision, and that was the modern management vision. So your CIO is busy listening about modern management and thinking about all the money he's going to save. That's great, but you know, ultimately it's your job. So your vision is probably littered with a whole lot of confusion right now. Not sure what it is, how to get there, even if you can get there, what does it look like? So let's just take a moment and start with what this is. So we have our classic workplace where we are today, and we have the modern workplace. And gluing this journey together is this buzzword called digital transformation. So when we start with your traditional PC management world, you have on-premises infrastructure, virtual machines, hardware, firewalls, all sorts of exciting stuff. And you have business-owned devices that are being tightly controlled with configuration manager and group policy objects. So you have Configuration Manager doing all the great things it does, imaging, application deployment, patching, reporting. And then you have Active Directory for your identity with group policy objects, over 2,500 of them. And you're managing all this complexity and it doesn't scale down very well. So traditionally, this Windows management stuff only worked for organizations that were larger than 600 to 800 machines. If you're smaller than that, it, it didn't really work that well. But when we go to a modern management world, we have to pause, you know, take a deep breath and realize this is a completely different world. It's almost a clean slate. And we're looking at not only how we manage things, but we're starting with applications, you know, using SaaS-based applications, and even the application format, such as universal Windows platform applications, is key to this vision. You're relying on different management technologies, so Intune mobile device management takes over from Configuration Manager and Active Directory. And the devices are even different. This isn't purely a Windows thing. This is also for Windows and non-Windows devices because we want users to be able to bring their own devices as well as give customers flexibility to choose what types of devices they want in their organizations. So with traditional IT, you can see that there's a big shift to going to the cloud. And this can create all sorts of out of issues is the right way to put it, but there's definitely a lot of questions that need to be answered 
to make this a reality because uh, ideally, you're going away from Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. You, you're going away from domain, domain join devices to Azure AD join devices. Uh, you're no longer using group policy, you're using a much more simple set of policies through mobile device management, uh, configuration managers out of the picture. Uh, and then you're using either Intune or a mobile device management product. And uh, your license activation moves to the cloud along with other things, including BitLocker, for example, your disk encryption starts storing its keys in the cloud. So the journey needs some bridges. It's, it's not a binary transition for many organizations, but we'll, we'll talk about the transition a little bit more later. Microsoft is bundling things together under Microsoft 365. That's nothing really new. It's just sort of a new way of licensing and marketing what they're already doing today. So Office 365 is a rapidly evolving version of Office with lots of cloud functionality. Uh, that's not just constrained to Windows. Windows 10 is the cloud-friendly version of Windows that you would be using. Enterprise mobility and security is a whole bundle of products, including Azure AD, Intune, and a slew of security products to try and make the whole bundle work in a secure fashion because you're, you're essentially moving away from the confines of the corporate network to a sort of work anywhere mentality. So when we look at the traditional IT, you're moving from single device per user to multiple devices. Some of them are business owned. Some of them are owned by the user. Your legacy network and applications start to go away. You're looking at cloud applications and uh, SaaS applications, universal Windows platform. Lots of automation. We're, I know there is automation today, but we're trying to take it a step further and automate more of the end user compute environment. We're trying to be more proactive with security, uh, with taking different stance with different security products. Uh, before IT used to do a lot of the day-to-day -day management of the user's devices, and now we're trying to put that in the hands of the users through self-service. So at the foundation of this is the fact that nothing is really static anymore. Windows as a service updates Windows features twice a year. And if we look at the newer applications out there, they often update at a fairly frequent cadence, monthly and in some cases weekly. So it's no longer about doing the same all the time. It's um, getting away from those operating system upgrades every three to five years, being very reluctant to upgrade the applications, to being a more fluid environment so you can deliver more business value, uh, being able to provide updates and new features in a very fluid fashion, and also making sure that there isn't a lot of risk associated with it. Now, when we look at Windows, I, I like to point out Windows 10 S. It's marketed as a security solution, a very secure version of Windows 10, and it is, but I think it's really the cleanest way you can show the modern management world because it's meant to be managed from the cloud. Uh, it, even has a different specification for devices, uh, an emphasis on battery life, long battery life, and uh, just having an architecture uh, from the operating system and applications that support security. So this idea of using Win32 applications goes out the window, which can be shocking to some people. Just to take a step to the side, I thought it was just 
important to show that a lot of these Windows 10S devices are not very expensive devices. The idea is, is that these devices don't need a lot of power to run the applications that they run. I mean, yes, you'll need your devices for your power users, but for a lot of these modern workers, they don't need uh, beefy machines to do the work that they need to do. And so there's some potential cost savings just on your device purchases by focusing on a more pure modern uh, vision in terms of your workspaces for Windows. So modern management is about bring your own device and choose your own device. Uh, you, when we look at it, there's going to be different populations of users. The users that use their own hardware, they're going to need some level of management, but you don't want to get too heavy handed. You want to make sure that they're securely accessing your environment, but at the same time, uh, not being tied down with an, a number of security features that make them revolt and not offer up their own hardware to be used with your environment. Obviously with your corporate owned devices that they choose, um, you're going to want more control over those devices. And yes, you don't want them to necessarily um, choose anything they want, but you would probably give them a narrow list of devices for their work style uh, or persona within the workplace uh, that would suit what they need to do. One of the biggest things that catches a lot of uh, a lot of customers is the fact that we can go and get rid of imaging altogether. The idea is to use Windows Autopilot. So it's a cloud-based service, and basically when the user gets their device, they turn it on and they get a bit of an out-of-box experience. And once they go through the out-of-box experience, the device is then uh, configured for their workplace. Now, the idea with Autopilot is to simplify this. So some of these pages I just showed you can actually be removed from the provisioning process so that they can uh, only fill out a minimal amount of uh, information and get that device up and running without needing IT to set the device up for them. This isn't going to be straightforward for some environments because IT has typically done this for the user. But the idea here is that we can make it so easy that the average user should be able to turn on their machine just like if they went to uh, the local Best Buy and bought a machine, they could walk through the out-of-box experience and the machine is ready for work. Now, group policy doesn't exist in the modern management world. And that scares some people because like, oh, okay, group policy is dead. Well, it isn't quite dead, but the idea here is, is that we'll eventually transition to policies delivered via mobile device management. So the administrator will set up the policies like they do almost in a group policy type fashion. And then there's an infrastructure through your mobile device management solutions such as Intune, where these policy settings will be applied to the device based on the user persona. Ultimately, we have to look at how we're going to get there, because it's just not as simple as you think. So for the small organization that's brand new and doesn't have a lot of technical debt, especially with applications, they might be able to start in a cloud-first mentality where they're strictly modern management day one. Or if they're not modern management, they might be able to make an instant transition very quickly. But with organizations that are a little bit larger, um, they may take an aggressive approach to get to modern management. 
and it's a bit like loading everybody up in a bus and uh, jumping it over a, pu uh, a pool and landing them on the other side. Um, this is obviously going to need a risk assessment, but depending on your environment, this may work. Now, when you're looking at transitioning group by group, this makes a lot of sense because um, there might be certain users, such as, say, salespeople or uh, administrative staff, that don't need all these legacy applications and um, types of uh, communication with management systems. You don't need the full configuration manager uh, suite of management. You don't need group policy. They can actually work in a modern management world. So you identify these personas and you make the slow transition group by group. Now where it gets a little bit interesting is Microsoft eventually caved in because there wasn't really a bridge to get people across because it was typically focused on users. Now with what we call co-management, we can let devices live in both worlds and we can focus on the features that we want to migrate between traditional and modern management. So when we look at co-management with Configuration Manager and Intune, we, we, we can have a device that lives in both worlds while we make the decisions to migrate certain workloads. So um, I tried to simplify this a bit. So it, it might be difficult to get away from imaging and traditional software distribution, such as your Win32 app. So Configuration Manager might handle that. Uh, group policy might be another piece that's still required for your device. But the device can be joined to your on-premises management and the cloud management at the same time. And when we look at easy to migrate workloads, uh, device compliance policies, so conditional access, probably very easy to move to the cloud because it's really a cloud feature. Uh, patching, uh, Windows update for business, if you're comfortable with using Windows update for business, great. You can move your patching to the cloud. Um, there's some mobile device management policies, so you have some control about who's getting updates when. Um, but one of the biggest issues I see is the reporting on the compliance. So operations management suite can be used without any sort of licensing to help provide that insight to your IT security department that wants to still have that deeper visibility into patch compliance and the state of the fleet. So I think before we conclude things, we, we have to talk about what the blocking issues would be when moving to a modern management world. First, I'll start with one of the biggest, which I believe is going to be the applications. We have a lot of Win32 applications. Uh, they come in EXE installers, MSI installers, and if you made the investment in application virtualization, you have some AppV or virtual applications in the environment. This works great, uh, except for when you try to deliver them with Intune. Intune, uh, through mobile device management, doesn't really support it that well. Um, the problem being is that these application formats are not modern. And what I mean by that is they're not delivered through the Windows Store. 
if it's delivered through the Windows Store, what you end up happening is uh, their universal Windows platform applications, and they're either natively coded for universal Windows platform, or they're kind of a Franken app where it's a hybrid between Win32 and universal Windows platform using desktop bridges. And the reason these modern applications are so heavily preferred is because um, they have a higher level of security. Uh, they don't have a lot of historical issues like DLL Hill uh, because they're isolated by default. Uh, they use more modern APIs. Uh, they have more modern capabilities. Um, this is where Microsoft's trying to go with their application strategy. And so um, even though I disagree with how they're doing it, you know, I'd like to see App V applications be in uh, the Microsoft Store. Um, what I end up seeing is that uh, the investment Microsoft is making is in desktop bridges or some before that known as Project Centennial, where you can kind of convert your existing application into this kind of hybrid application. But there's been a lot of issues in terms of the application specification, uh, allowing your application to work. And this gets further compounded because the application also has to use some APIs that might not be available anymore. And that's also the nature of the universal Windows platform world, where some things you would expect to work, like talking to uh, the SQL Server ODBC client, currently doesn't exist. Like Microsoft's in making investments and they're trying to make this better, but it's been very difficult to get line of business applications into this format. So that's been tough. And then when you try to deliver traditional applications through Intune, they have to be in MSI format and all the files for the application have to be inside the MSI. And if you've seen a lot of software installers from software vendors, um, especially the more complicated applications, uh, their installers are not built this way. So this is a huge deal and I think that's going to be a big blocker for major enterprises until we get better solutions in place or more modern applications. We'll have to see how this one plays out. The next piece is IT security. Um, cloud scares people and putting your security trust in the cloud is still a bit of an issue. Um, more and more people are using Azure AD, but they're using it in a very conservative fashion. And to do some of the more modern authentication mechanisms, uh, such as modern authentication, um, you, you have to store some extra data up in Azure AD. And that's causing some of my customers to be a little bit more hesitant. And then, you know, the whole idea of Office 365 and putting documents in the cloud and how do you properly secure them. There are solutions. It's not like Microsoft hasn't thought this through, but it's going to be a comfort level and it's going to be a bit of a battle. It's going to be like how Azure kind of started out where nobody wanted anything to do with Azure. And now that the comfort level has grown, there's more and more people lining up to move their workloads to the cloud, and it's become a better story. The next piece is also going to be IT operations. Their world is going to change drastically, in some ways for the better, but also just how do they do things that they used to do? It's going to be learning new tools and understanding fundamentally how things work in a modern world because these devices don't use configuration manager. They don't use your active directory with group policy. Um, so understanding MDM, how to leverage it and what's available in it, it it's going to be a learning experience. And, and so this is going to take, um, uh, you know, some learnings and uh, some best practices to develop uh, to get this properly adopted in your organization. And then finally, you got to think about your end users. I mean, I'm not saying they're dumb. It's just, you know, yeah, millennials are more tech savvy, but 
your most of your users are probably used to IT doing a lot of things for them. And I can even point to a project I'm working on where we're, we're not quite doing modern management, but we're, we're going towards it. And just the idea of the user having to go to a store application to self-serve their work applications is a huge mind shift for the end user. It used to be IT just gave me my applications. I didn't have to think about it. When I got my machine, everything was set up. And modern management isn't like that. It's not the same way. I'm not saying you can't take Intune and make Intune deliver some of this stuff for the user, but it is a shift away from IT doing everything for the end user. Because in order to get the user up and going quickly, you don't necessarily want to download and install everything they might need. And you know, if you're looking at autopilot, um, I very strongly suggest that you, you, you don't look at any sort of custom images. You look at whatever your OEM image is, and then you let Intune and, uh, take care of the rest of this, and that could be on-demand software installs, and maybe you just push Office 365 as a mandatory thing because everybody's going to want it, but it, otherwise, you, you don't want to get over engineer this uh, you know this is about getting users used to this new way of working with their machines in your environment so thanks for taking the time to listen to me and um here's my email you know it's kevin dot Kaminsky at BigHatGroup.com. Uh, you can also follow me on LinkedIn. I post a lot of technical articles there. Um, I do have an evolving YouTube channel as well uh, with uh, under Kaminsky Kevin. And um, also, don't forget uh, to keep track of a lot of the different MVPs that are part of uh, MVP days on CheckYourLogs.net and. Thanks once again, and I'll hope to talk to you again through some other means, blogging or videos. Thank you.